that. So we we thank God for those um, uh, matters that we have shared together concerning them. We, as we continue to do so, we would like to share um, God's word this, um, that will lead us and so on. We'll, God's word today comes from Acts chapter 6. Uh, we'll be considering most uh, um, three verses, three to six, but we'll read from verse chapter six of the book of Acts from verse one to seven so that we have the context. Um, we'd like to do that now. I'll read the word and then we shall see what the Lord would like us to take from this. And our focus is um, the praise of God's word and prayer in the life of the church. In those days when the numbers of disciples were increasing, the Hellenistic Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the 12 gathered all the disciples together and said, it would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers and sisters, Choose seven men from among you who are to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. This proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and also Philip, Procurus, Nicanor, Timon, Paminas, Nicholas from Antioch, a convert from Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. So the word of God spread the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. Seven verses that are packed with a lot of truth concerning God's word, but we have only a short time, actually just uh, uh, 10 minutes to see what the word of God is telling us in this place. And I am saying that there's seven things that we can learn from this passage. Uh, the church of God had gone through quite a bit of trial, both from outside and from within. And we remember from Acts chapter two, the disciples were meeting in the upper room. There were about 120 of them, but uh, Satan was using all sorts of tricks, first of all, persecution, but also, and we remember the, disciples being uh, taken through the Sanhedrin. Then there was some, because of the social action taken living communal lives, we had a challenge within the church from within with the, uh, Acts chapter five, Ananas and Sapphira. And now when we come to this passage, we have another internal conflict between the Jews uh, the, the Hebraic Jews and the Hellenic Jews. And this is the context within which we, we would like to look at what is the word leading us today in consideration. And I say there are seven lessons that we, from the growing pains in the church, as the church grows, what are those challenges that we see? And the first one is expect destructions. And the first destruction they were seeing in this passage is the Hellenistic Jews, widows and Hebraic Jews, widows were quarreling over food and distribution. And although we may take this as a small point and the church has decided to provide good things for the believers as they came together, it could have been a destruction. And, um, how were they going to deal with this? We see the disciples uh, in the passage here saying, let's not be distracted. 
that is what we are telling the, the church. But we are saying we must not be distracted. And so the 12 gathered, that's the apostles, they gathered all the disciples together and said, it would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word in order to wait on tables. So the second one is um, organization can further the word of God. And we see that this is what the disciples, um, the apostles did. They said, brothers and sisters in verse three, let us choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. And um, so they wanted to make change. And the third point we learned from here is that change was inevitable and therefore they must be adaptable. And so they said it's not for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to serve tables. And may, somebody may have those who are being very arrogant to say we cannot deal with this uh, small matters of people quarreling over their food um, and we, we must deal with the greater things. But they thought that this matter needed to be dealt with and quickly, but they decided that they must choose men full of, of the spirit and wisdom and they must be given the responsibility to do this work. So they wanted to reorganize. And the, the point here is that people should not be put in positions they are not ready for. So they say, let's choose seven men. That seven is an interesting one, but will not deal with today. They must be full of spirit and wisdom, and they will carry the responsibility of dealing with this. So this was the first appointment of deacons in the church because so that the elders could take the responsibility of leading the work of God and taking care of two things, of play of and ministering the word of God, the preaching, because that's what brings people to the savior. So they chose the seven men and they were led by one man called Stephen. And we are told that he was full of faith and the Holy Spirit. And so they were presented to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands over them. The other one that note in terms of number five, that there are different roles in the body of Christ. The apostles gave themselves to the word and prayer. They said, it's not good for us to leave the word of God to serve tables. Uh, the, a modern reader of this must find themselves offended at the statement. Who are these men who rebuff with and refuse to engage in, in a simple complaint? Do you have time to participate in a simple daily distribution? Do you think yourself above this task? I, are you so self-important you cannot engage in affairs such as this? That is one direction. But what we see also here, as we look at this passage, is that the word of God must take priority. And uh, because this is what the disciples the apostles say that they must turn to the ministry of the word in verse seven. It says, so the word of God spread, the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. If they had not taken the action that of setting these deacons to take care of the social action in the church, they may have spent a lot of time that saves. And so when they took this action, we see that in verse five, this proposal pleased the whole church, the whole group. They chose the of the Holy Spirit 
and also the other six people. And we see they were very well chosen. Some were Greeks, some were Jews, some were from Antioch, a, 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 a recent convert to Judaism, saying that leadership doesn't come from one group of people. And they chose them very, very wisely. And we don't see this matter actually arising again within the church. And the final matter that we consider is that great things can be accomplished when we work together. And so what we see in verse seven, that the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased a great deal. And even many priests, this is very interesting that many priests actually became obedient to the faith. And we note as the church develops and grows and moves on, great things can be accomplished when we work together. Had the decos not stepped up at this point, the apostles would have become bogged down, but because everyone did their part and conducted their ministry, the word increased, the number of disciples increased, and even many priests came to the faith. To God be the glory. We thank God for this word, and we hope that those seven points can help us as we focus on many things in the church. But the main point is the ministry of the word and the ministry of prayer. Those are the ones which drive the church in the other church and still drives the church today. And so now when we break into groups so that we can pray together, let us remember the word of God and also the ministry of prayer in the church. And so we saw that those people who believed and, and, and they were chosen, they were brought to the apostles and the apostles did only two things. They prayed for them and they laid their hands on them so that they would do the work that God had given them. And may the Lord do the same for us as we come to that point of prayer this evening. So we we'll like the person who is there 